Hey, what's going on everybody? Uh, we've got a 2015 Subaru Outback. Yeah, it's Legacy Outback, whatever, same thing. Um, this car is at a, um, at a repair facility on a side of town that normally doesn't work on something this new. And uh, this is from one of their dealer customers, car dealer customers. And it's got a um, blind spot monitor issue. So we deal with this all the time. Uh, this this is a new one for the shop, so they're kind of, you know, they kind of just let us take the car. So we're actually here at our shop. We brought this car to our shop. Uh, so the issue is that it's got some um, blind spot unavailable message on the dash, and I didn't capture an image of that driving over here. Um, but what I will show is that um, the, we're just, we're just key on engine off. I've driven a lot of these, and this blind spot off button, I'm pressing it. It's supposed to illuminate a message on the dash, and there's nothing happening. And this normally happens for um, I get this issue a lot when there's a code in the system uh, for like a loss of communication to, to the left one. Because I think the left one is the mass. No, you know what? You can talk to both these on this one. So basically, uh, we're going to go ahead and pull a check engine light scan. We probably have just a code to deal with. And this is ADOS stuff. So a lot like hybrid vehicles, it's very DTC driven, our diagnosis path. So we're going to go through diagnosing this concern. Let's check it out. All right, so we've got a full scan pulled up here. We're just using the 919. Um, and we actually don't have any codes, which is what's weird. So you can see left and right side detection both pass no codes. We got a code for the occupancy detection system. That's a current malfunction. And then we have a current malfunction for the sun load sensor. That's because we're inside the shop. And then a current power uh, rear gate motor circuit open. Okay. Uh, and then LIN communication history in the in the seat power motor, which I, I would venture to guess that this oxy detection, occupancy detection and LIN communication in the seat module probably are related. But I don't think they have anything to do with that. But let's go look at some service info and see if this SRS airbag code could possibly cause an issue because it is a safety system and they may consider the blind spot system a safety system. Okay. Um... I've been on service info for like 35, 40 minutes. And I can't find anything that would cause this. And I kind of looked around live data and I'm not seeing, let me show you what, I, what I'm dealing with here. Um, so if I go to the, where'd it go? There we go. Thought it was the left hand side. We'll establish communication to the module. Um, yeah, no codes. I've been poking wires and stuff, so I want to see if... And I'll show you what I was looking at. All there is is, like, system fail flag fail. So there's some kind of fail condition. The halt flag's normal. On-off flag on. And then voltage is good and temperature is good. Or, well, 89 seems kind of high. Let me check the other side. Um, but they the key's been on for a bit, so these radars do warm up a little. I just now thought of that. You guys can kind of come along with my thought process on this one. So 10 degrees more on the left side. Um, that's kind of odd. This car's been in the shop overnight here. Anyways. Um, so we're going to go back into the left. Because, and I'll show you, let me show you why. Why we're going to the left here, actually. Oh. So... It's got some obvious damage, right? Where the bumper's been pushed in. So I'm, I'm thinking it has something to do with this, but there's no codes and the system shows a halt flag for fail. So I'm just struggling to find a direction. You guys get to deal with all the fun stuff like I do. You get to see, oh, what's the wrong one? You get to see my process on why I'm having such an issue with this. I don't understand. See? And for the cancel his for the cancel code, we're seeing um, a trip stamp ninety one sixty eight rear radar internal fault radar misalignment current status, but there's no codes. 
in the system. See? Super interesting. I find that really, really interesting. Um, all right, we'll be right back. Give me a second. I don't know what to think about this. I'm going to have to just, I don't know if this is going to make it to video or not because i got to find out if I just don't know what I'm doing or if this is actually a scan tool issue. So check this out. Switch to the launch scan tool, um, X431, and in the left-hand side, there's a rear radar internal failure, radar misalignment, current and past. So the reason why I wonder if this isn't a scan tool fault is because the code is listed in the cancel code. Now, Subaru may, in their factory scan tool, set this up to where it doesn't set a DTC in the module. You have to go in the cancel code to find this, and Autel may, may uh, do a very good job of representing the factory scan tool, and this launch is just kind of acquiring data and, and displaying it differently. So I really haven't done this yet, so I'll let you guys come with me. Um, so obviously, if we go into fault codes, we've got these current past 23, 28, which is the same thing we saw in the failure code cancel code in the scan data on the Autel. Um, do we have the same data stream stuff? I, I, I really haven't looked at the, Yeah, so we have the same data stream information, but I don't see the cancel code. There's the radar alignment function. Door mirror here. See, so we can, yeah, we can turn on the indicators on the See, this is weird. So in the, I gotta do some research and find out. Um, in the meantime, I'll post this and I'll still submit a, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and submit a tool report on the tool. Let me switch back to the Autel and I'll show you guys how to submit a um, uh, an error report to Autel so they can um, investigate this and find out if it's something wrong with the actual tool or if that's how the system's supposed to be designed and we're just supposed to know that. So hold on. All right, guys, so if you're going to um, submit, like, so we had DTCs and cancel code, but not in trouble codes. So if you go up here to the top and hit this little thing here, uh, this little uh, dialog box, and then select what your issue is, error occurred while reading DTCs. Um, press OK. So we're going to put our reason, uh, put uh, other scan tools. Sorry, I'm trying to type and look at the camera at the same time. Uh, read B2328 DTC Auto. Whoop, oh, oh, gotta spell it right, guys. Does not. Uh, we're gonna put. Vehicle does have the B oh, 2328 DTC. So I apologize for anyone that stayed through that. <laughs> and then um, we're going to go ahead and put my contact info. Let's see, you would put your contact info. It's got this zip file that's basically what what you've done here. Uh, which is a, a log of, of the data that's happened. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put my contact info in and click send. And then uh, from there, it will be submitted correctly. Okay, guys. So we're actually um, day three with this vehicle. Uh, I didn't think to film it. Basically, we sent the report to Autel to let them know the scan tool wasn't reading the DTC, I, although I think it should. Um, I, they might come back and say, well, Subaru scan tool doesn't do it that way, so we do it this way also. Whatever, I think a full system scan should should pull that, or they may just fix it. Usually they just fix it if it's really a concern. So uh, the 919 has been my number one go-to tool for a while, and I haven't made a whole lot of videos on it. Um, I got a lot of backlog video I need to get editing and get it out there. Um, so we, what I'm upset about is that I didn't diagnose it on camera. So basically, that code wouldn't go away. The B2328 was hard set every time we turned the key on. We checked powers, grounds, comms, everything was good to it. Uh, we could talk to it, you know, we could, um, there was no active test in it to perform, actually just short of the radar calibration, which uh, we are not going to do because it's got an internal fault. So we're just going to, uh, due to the fact that it's been physically damaged, um, I already showed you guys that the other day. Okay, 
Yeah, due to the fact it's been physically damaged, we're assuming the radar got hit pretty hard. So in the air of caution, we need to go ahead and replace it. Most service info says that if it's dropped or damaged, it needs to be replaced. So we did that. Um, the bracket was not bent. We did all the measurements we could on it. We actually confirmed with another vehicle. The bracket's really thin metal. God, I wish we would have... Okay, I really wish... I will film that next time I have it off. Anyways, we replaced the radar module itself. Um, to, torqued it 7.5 newton meters. It's got three 10 millimeter bolts, one plug in, bumper cover comes off, it's right there. Uh, the, the bracket, it's on super flimsy and it was not bent. You could tell very easily if it was bent. So just do a good visual inspection on these things. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna call this video, I have no idea, but um, I've made plenty of them where it says don't trust every scan tool. Um, everyone always asks me, what scan tool should I get? The answer is all of them, yes. Uh, factory would have been perfect on this, but I don't do enough Subarus to warrant Subaru Select Monitor 4. Um, so we use a slew of aftermarket tools. Um, I probably could have done uh, Subaru Select Monitor 4 over SOD with somebody. Um, with the iScan 3, I don't know. Um, but basically, here's where we're at now. Uh, it's got a new radar installed, and then uh, we're going to do another video. So check out part two of Liz calibrating the actual radar. Another spam phone call. Anyways, part two of video will be Liz doing a calibration on the blind spot monitor on this thing. Um, so, um, watch out for that. And remember, like, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff. If you want to learn how to diagnose stuff like this, although this is a terrible example of that, go check out l1training.com and sign up today. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.